Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise this evening on adjournment to add my voice and stand up for the small and medium, uh, often single-handed rock lobster fishers of Tasmania. And I want to take this opportunity tonight to rise and speak on their behalf because uh, over the last few months I've been relentlessly supporting their position for clarity from the government <coughs> in regards to a large suite of rule changes that are pending for the industry. And I wanted to rise tonight to explain why this has been so important for me to continue to put forward their views in such a strong and persistent way. Uh, it all started earlier this year when I was invited to a meeting by a small number of rock lobster fishers. Uh, we met here in the parliament. And before that meeting, I knew that they were delicious and I had been on many camping trips where divers had um, pulled in some beautiful fish for us to enjoy. Uh, but I didn't really understand the nature of the industry really well. And at that meeting, there were a large... Um, list of concerns with the proposed rule and policy changes for the rock lobster fishery. But as they were talking and as they were explaining their concerns, it was clear to me that there was one overriding uh, issue that was held within this suite of changes. And that was the proposal to expand the 60 pod area from an area that you can currently fish uh, on the majority part of the uh, west coast and for that to actually expand up across the north west over to the northeast that would take in both King Island, Flinders Island, the north coast, uh, including a lot of space where our small and medium rock lobster fishers fish. Now, um, it did take a little while for me to do work, to have meetings, to meet with fishers, to um, go out and meet with them at their home ports, to really understand why they were so concerned about this. And I wanted to share that this evening. Um, many of the rock lobster fishers of Tasmania uh, own and operate the boats that are at the wharves uh, scattered right around our coastline, uh, they have been fishing for generations. Many of the people that I've met with and spoken to, and I've had the best time meeting with our fishers across Tasmania, uh, were taught to fish by their uncles, their fathers, their grandfathers, and they now are taking their sons and daughters out with them and hoping to pass on this classically Tasmanian way of life to the next generation coming through. But for many of these fishers, the concerns with the expansion of this 60 pot area will put pressure on the fishery and pressure on their communities and the way that they fish. Um, the pressure isn't just about the individual fisher. And often in a case where we're looking at um, uh, a, a section of the community that's standing up against a potential uh, imposed change, it's very personal and it could be quite selfish. But a lot of these fishers have been explaining that the work that they do and the contribution that they make to their community, yes, will have an impact on them, but it'll also have an impact on their families, their communities and the economies of Tasmania where it needs needed most and where it matters most in regional Tasmania. So not only have I met with fishers in these communities, but I've also met with the people that rely on them. Um, not only across their own family, where their partner may be a person that works in a local medical centre or the local school, the local uh, IGA, the bakery. Um, if these fishers are lost from our regional communities, then their partners and their extended families are lost. If they can't continue to do this job in their local community, then they need to, and some of these guys have been doing it, you know, been on a boat since they were six, seven, eight years old. They've been fishing, you know, actually supporting the fishing since they were 12, 13, 14. It's all they know. Then they will have to reskill and look, perhaps not in their local communities, how they can continue to support themselves and their families. So we lose, we potentially lose these fishes out of these communities and uh, when I was on the east coast I met with someone that's got a slipway down on the east coast. 80% of his business relies on this fleet that come in and out of the community. I met with a boat builder who has uh, established a large portion of his business actually designing and creating boats for fisheries across Tasmania. There is a really large ongoing ripple effect into communities if this 60 pot expansion is implemented and impacts fishers and the businesses that rely on them. We heard from uh, Mick Tucker, the character from the East Coast, who knows the absolute impact it will 
people have on the economy of the Breaker Day community. We have heard relentlessly people standing up for and speaking on behalf of these fishers, but what we're getting from the government is a vacuum of response. I don't think it's clear to this government and to the Minister at the moment the impact that not making this decision and not announcing this decision is having on these local fishers. It appears to me that um, the mental health and the anxiousness, the worry that's being felt is being disregarded. Yes, it does take time to consult. It takes time to implement uh, good decisions, and I completely get that, and the fishers get that, but they were expecting a decision in August. I, this week, have been silent on the matter to give space to the Minister to announce her intentions. If the Minister is not in a position by now, having done all her research and received her recommendations to make an announcement, then the Minister must put at ease the fishers of Tasmania and announce the date that she will make this announcement. Because we know, and the Minister has said repeatedly, that these rules have to be implemented by the 1st of November. Fishers across Tasmania have to make decisions, massive decisions about their future. They have to know how they're going to tool up for these new changes. It's actually not even known whether people can make the measuring devices they're going to need to use if the different changes are going to come in and change the sizes of the fish in Tasmania. The Minister and the Government are not leaving themselves enough time for this to be implemented cleanly, but they're not actually uh, releasing the anxieties of the fisher that rely on this decision to make future decisions for themselves and their families in their communities. So this has been really important to me. I've been really proud to be an advocate of the small and medium fishers of Tasmania. I've been really proud to stand with them and help give strength to their voice. But right now, we need a minister that is going to make a decision, be clear about the decision, and do it in a timely way to ensure that the future of what is a classically Tasmanian industry and tradition uh, can continue in Tasmania and our small towns and our region and communities continue to thrive, supported by our small and medium rock lobsters. Mr. Speaker, 